My name is Molly Kenny and I'm running for the position of Education Officer. I've actually had a little bit of experience with this um, and I tend to find that the college actually does like to work for students. It just has some current, so it has a specific budget to look after students' needs and to look after student services. And I think sometimes within that budget, like, you wouldn't, like, you, you don't really realise how much money they're spending on things that we don't really use that often. So they have some resources in areas like, say, like currently the Careers Advisory Service, which is a fantastic resource, but needs to be advertised a little bit better, marketed better to students, because I got like six emails one evening from them. Like, no way am I reading those. And none of them said, you're an engineering student and we can do this for you. They just say what's happening in the week. So if we channel that resource a little bit differently, then we'd probably end up, the, the college, I'm sure would end up saving some money in ways that they're getting more useful out of their resources. Um, and if we can get to do that and get to look into what student services are being used, what aren't being used, and where we can start shifting some of the resources, like as Patrick Prendiga said at the Q&A, like the money doesn't come out of nowhere and they are hoping to develop the college in the strategic plan and from that the students union um, and all students need to like rally behind the services we want to be improved because the more money they get in the more money they can they can spend and they're currently deciding what to do with it and we need to kind of tell them what we want them to do uh, not just kind of in two years two or three years go but no where is my you know fantastic college center that we didn't advocate for I do and I don't. Um, in terms of the, actually the SU is currently making a strategic plan for what it wants to do. For a significant change, you need to be able to fit the students that you're currently dealing with. Um, it's significant change to one particular set of students. What the college needs to do and what we need to do is work together a lot more closely on things like curriculum changes because sometimes what happens is you're crossing over and you have a new education officer coming in or you have a new set of sabbats coming in and miscommunication in the college uh, and it doesn't take advantage of it, it just doesn't realise that we don't have all the information. So is it is the year long enough? Probably not. Um, is it, can we make worthwhile changes in that year though? Definitely. It's the university's job to train you in academic skills. If they want to train you as an entrepreneur, that's what they need to focus people on. So that's what the new business centre hopes to adapt and change. Um, and that's fantastic. And that's their motivation and they're getting, you know, all of these massive professors and psychologists in to realise the best curriculum for that. And that's fantastic and that needs to be developed more in college in general, which has been with Launchboxes has developed that in some ways. What I would, like, in an education officer capacity, at university council and things like that, I would definitely advocate for more uh, student interaction in the classroom with things like entrepreneurship, with things like public speaking, or with the skills that people need to actually go to the workplace. Because sometimes, um, sometimes people tend to go on internships and come back to college and go, I actually learned nothing that I've been learning in college uh, was applicable to me. And that needs to change, and that's a curriculum change, and that's what I would definitely advocate for, things like university council, things like board. Um, but in the other context of my manifesto policy, I think a lot of students at the moment are trying to find part-time jobs that are struggling to get by, that are taking on massive amounts of hours in like evening shifts, skipping college to do some work. And that's, like, that's horrendous for your education. Um, you, it's just incredibly difficult to do. As someone who did have a part-time job and did work evening shifts um, in my second year, God, it was horrible. But it had to be done. And I think the problem that what I'd like to change is to get more people equipped to do things like barista training, to do bartender training, so you can get more of the jobs that students can do and that have weekend work and evening work. So that you're trained out there already and you can kind of then negotiate your terms of work instead of coming in and they're going, We'll pay you, you know, the very minimum wage uh, you'll get, we'll rope around your hours because you're a student and you don't know how to complain. Um, whereas I'd like to do workshops on uh, basic financial budgeting, contract, uh, you know, what to look out for in a contract and things like that so the students are more equipped to do the weekend work and the evening work that we already do but a load of students are just scammed over by 
why things as it is and that needs to change and I think the only way that that can be done in college is through something like the Students Union because like the university is not going to not going to do it for Yeah them. I think Donal had a town hall meeting yesterday and um, that was actually quite successful. What tends to happen is that people think that like only their class reps can interact with the Students Union like their class reps are the only people who can interact with anything that isn't essentially going you know going to a lecture dealing with lectures and things like that that needs to definitely change like there is no way we can have a student, any kind of student movement, any kind of student rally without having all students even hearing about it. Like that's all they need to do to order to realise whether you like it, like whether you're on board with an idea or not. You just need to hear it. Um, how I'd like to do that? I hope with the new CMO that they'll have so much more time to kind of focus on how students interact most with the un with the union. Because at the moment, I don't, I don't think enough students interact with the union. Like, I'm, I'm sure you don't interact with it on a daily basis as much as we do. Because a lot of the time what happens is that someone, and I know I've been in the student union first, since first year, so I am one of them. But like, I've loads of friends who've, who know nothing about it and wouldn't without me. So that needs to change to, for the general population to know what the students are doing. And um, hopefully the CMO uh, will probably clarify that a little bit better because they'll have more time and more invested interest into that. For the moment, um, as you'll probably mention in my manifesto, I do say about communicating student services. That needs to be done through the schools as well as through the services. So I think what happens sometimes is you get, if you get an email from like the secretary of your school or that says, you know, engineering workshop, I'm using engineering example, that's what I study. So engineering workshop, I'm far more likely to go to it. Um, so just changing the channels of communication that college use because some college services like student learning and development do fantastic things, don't get the numbers because people don't either have, it doesn't fit in with your time schedule or they don't work with the school specifically enough for what students need. Yeah. Um, yes, that, like, that definitely reflects badly on the SU um, and I'll admit there's a couple of people who sign up to be a class rep to go on the weekend away. This year, um, Katie did change up class rep training which made it a lot like, there was a lot less ringing than this has gone on in previous years. I've been to three classroom trainings and two USI congresses, and it, it doesn't get better there either. Um, but what did happen this year is we had more focused workshops and more interaction than that. So usually what happens is the next morning after classroom training on the Sunday, you're sitting in a room getting a lecture by, like, some person who used to be a welfare officer, or used to be an education officer, which are, like, fantastic to have and fantastic speech to us but it just doesn't get people engaged enough and people don't feel the need. So then they go out and they think like, great, I'll just sleep in tom tomorrow morning. And that is a big issue, but there's the only way to improve it is to improve interactivity in classroom training and then hope people don't drink as much, but students are students. There's a certain amount of inevitability. There is a lot though to be, there is a lot to be said of what the plan for the weekend is. And I think maybe if we publish that a little bit more People a little bit, you know, people who want to get involved will go, and people who don't will, uh, and people who just want a weekend of drinking will stay at home and do it. Next. So yeah, the li library is something that I mentioned quite a bit. Um, what tends to happen, like, what tends to happen is that someone will promise, like, as you said, a lot of, um, a lot of education officers have been really ambitious with it. You have to work with the college on it, and um, the college has a specific budget. The librarian has specific budget. With the new opening of the 24-hour library full-time, which has already been paid for by a philanthropist, there is more money there than to expand on, on opening hours. Um, what I would kind of hope to do with that, though, is figure out which libraries need it the most. The majority of the time, no one wants to go to the Berkeley, no one wants to go to the Usher. You're more likely to want to go like to the Stanley Quirk, um, which has horrendous opening hours for students who are in for horrendously long hours. Like, it needs to be checked where the resources need to go and not just, I'm not going to blatantly promise more, uh, more opening hours because I can't do that. I don't have the money. Uh, I don't have the money college does and those resources need to be used properly, not uh, under examination. Like I haven't, I haven't looked into how much money the library has. They won't tell me um, until I do, until if I were to get elected, then, then it'll be easy to figure out. Um, I would definitely go with the faculty convener position uh, as to give my mo like the best experience for it. University Council, which is sat by only by the education officer and the GSU officers as well, um, definitely give me a broader grasp of 
what education is and what the education officer does. And then, other than that, I was obviously heavily involved in the School of Engineering itself and class rep there. So faculty assembly and stuff, being used to it, is probably the most the the thing that you need most in running for the position of education officer, as you said.